I wanted to thank Sebex Company for hosting the event again this year. Um, it's really good to see everybody from the community uh, back in Latvia again. I wanted to talk about uh, low-level discoveries. Yes, thank you. Um, first, a question. Who of you here are already using uh, Zebex 2.0? Please raise your hands. Keep, keep them raised, keep them raised. Who of you are you actually using low-level discovery? All right. Who of you are using low-level discovery with self-written scripts? Not that much anymore. Okay, good. Stay tuned. Um, first, a bit about myself. A bit louder. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm an infrastructure specialist at uh, Competa IT, which is a Dutch company. Uh, we provide uh, Unix, uh, networking, and uh, developers for uh, customer projects. I've been using Zabbix since 2006 um, with version 1.1.3. Um, so I've been yeah, quite busy with Zabbix uh, uh, for a while. Uh, last year I started hosting a website called zabbixtutorials.org. Currently there's not a lot of content yet, but um, it explains the basics uh, of all the terminology for Zabbix. So if you have any new users that do not understand what items tri triggers, uh, actions, all that kind of stuff is, uh, you can point them to there. And it has a really nice explanation uh, from a less technical perspective. Um, and very, very recently, I actually uh, started a LinkedIn group for all the Dutch users. Um, if you're Dutch and uh, please, and you have a LinkedIn account, please join this uh, because I want to try and organize smaller events like this in the Netherlands uh, in the near future. So that's about me. Um, what is low-level discovery? The manual says that it's a way to automatically create items, triggers, and graphs uh, for all the different entities on a computer. Um, it actually uses a, a, an item uh, that returns a JSON formatted string uh, that you can then interpret uh, on the Zabbix server and it will use prototypes that will create these items and triggers and graphs for you. How does this work? Um, basically, you have a Zebex server and a server running the agent. The server asks the agent for the uh, discovery string that you want, and it will return a JSON string, um, which has a couple of uh, macros in there, and the macros actually provide you with some, um, uh, with some values. So, for instance, in this case, we have a uh, file system discovery, um, which returns all the mount points of the uh, of the file systems that are mounted in the Linux machine, and it returns also the the file system type uh, that's being used. Then the Zebex server uses that information and pushes it into the prototypes. The prototypes then create the items, triggers, and graphs for you. So what this means is that you uh, basically just um, define one rule that will automatically create all the items, triggers, and graphs um, in an automated fashion for you. Um, you can use them, the, the, the macros that, that uh, the LLD uses, you can use them in a lot of places in Zabbix. Um, of course, in the item prototypes, also in the triggers, and for names in the in the graphs, um, so you can use any item in Zabbix for automatic discovery. So you're not limited to actually using uh, passive or active items. Um, so this means you can also use uh, trapper items or even user parameters if you want. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, external scripts if you want. Um, all the stuff that's automatically generated, it will be cleaned up by Zebix after a set limit of time. If you have a, um, uh, a server that, that a disk was removed and it's not uh, mounted anymore, then in, in, the, in the set limit of time, it will automatically clean up all the items and triggers and graphs that were generated for that uh, mount point. So by default, the agent has two types of LLD uh, that you can use. The one is the, uh, the file system discovery, and the other one does uh, discovery on the uh, available network interfaces. So in 
if you do a file system discovery, uh, you get back the file system names and the file system types, which we uh, just showed in the previous uh, slide with the uh, JSON. Um, and if you want to use the uh, network interface uh, discovery, it'll just give you back the macro that contains the name of the interface. <coughs> um, yeah, sorry, I'm going to go back here. So this means that if you have this macro, then you can use that specific uh, name that it returns to, to create the items that you would normally use for your ETH0 or local uh, interfaces or whatever. Um, there's also uh, an SNMP discovery available in Zebex. Um, you can use an OID uh, to do basically an SNMP walk-on and then it will return an index value, uh, which is the last part of the uh, OID, so after the dot. And uh, it will also automatically push back the value that it generates uh, from the SNMP walk. So, for instance, if you have an SNMP walk, uh, you would do that, for instance, on a uh, router device or something like that. You get back a, a list of interface descriptions with, uh, with actual names for those interfaces that you have set. In Zebex, uh, it would look like this uh, on the bottom. So, here you can see that this index actually uh, corresponds with the index that's used there, and the name uh, comes back in the as an appeal value here. So um, this could possibly generate a lot of items and triggers, um, and most of them might not even be interesting. So what you could do is you can use a regular expression to actually filter only for the things that you want to monitor via LLB. Um, the uh, uh, a uh, regular expression that's, that's mentioned here is just the, the, the default one that's being used on the file system discovery in Zabbix. Um, so, okay, what can I do with all of this? Well, basically, you can monitor all the things. Um, I'm going to work through some cases where I've used the, uh, the LLD uh, lately. Um, this is just the basic screenshots from the manual. I just ripped them off. Um, what you can see here is, is, is how the discovery rules actually build up. So you have the, um, uh, the name of your discovery that you're going to put in your template. Um, then you here you specify, of course, which item type that you're going to use and the actual key that you're going to ask the agent to, uh, to use to uh, uh, send back the discovery. The update interval means that every hour, in this case, uh, the discovery will run on that agent. And then the agent will return to JSON in, in yeah, like every hour. You can use flexible intervals just uh, like you can use them with items. And this is the uh, number of days that it will keep the um, discovered items and triggers and graphs um, in the system after it has stopped uh, actually uh, receiving the discoveries for that. So um, that's, the, that's the amount of time that it will take before stuff will leave your system. Um, and, and here you can see the regular expression uh, that's being used to filter. Um, <coughs> right, okay, so this is an, 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 an uh, example of how you set up an uh, item. You can't really read it, I guess. Um, the screenshot is in the manual, but what you basically do is you provide the, the macro that, that's being used in the, uh, in the discovery <coughs> directly into the item key, and that will generate it for you. Um, otherwise, there's no real change in the, the item. So, once the discovery has been run, um, you, you can, yeah, you can see what kind of items it actually created. Um, sorry, this no, th this is a list of the items that's uh, that's created for. Uh, with, is it, sorry, this is a list of the items that you can use um, within your discoveries. So. The discovery allows us to automatically create all these items for every file system on the system uh, automatically. Um, here we have a trigger, just as a small example. Uh, as you can see, it uses the same macro again, just in the trigger expression and in the name. So, uh, that was the, basically the, the, uh, yeah, the normal file system uh, discovery. Um, I had a need uh, at some point to actually discover uh, the Windows services that 
needed to run on a machine that were out of started. And the Zebex agent doesn't do that automatically. Um, I've created a ticket for it, so if you need this functionality, please vote. Um, what I've done in the meanwhile is I use a PowerShell script and uh, that just queries the, uh, via my, uh, the uh, Windows management interface. And uh, it will yeah, grab all the, uh, all the services that uh, are auto run and that are running and it pushes it back into uh, the LOD discovery. So my script uh, generates these uh, uh, macros for you to, so that you can use them in the, uh, in the items and triggers. And yeah, basically that, uh, that helps a lot in automating all the processes, oh sorry, all the services that you want to monitor on the Windows machine. Um, you can, yeah, you can use, uh, you can grab it from the, from my GitHub if you, uh, if you really need it. Um, here's some screenshots from the <coughs> services uh, uh, discovery. Um, so, I'm not sure, can, can you see it? Uh, up back, yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, basically it just generates uh, monitoring of uh, the service states, in this case, and uh, all these services are running. Uh, you can see the triggers and the, uh, and the items that are generated. So, um, at some point in the IRC channel for Zebex, uh, there was a user that asked, how can I monitor the CPU usage of a separate process on the Linux? Um, well, the agent doesn't do that automatically. Yet. What I did is I uh, created a template with two user uh, custom, customer, custom user parameters. And one actually does a, a discovery and generates a list of, of processes that are running on the system. And then I found out that uh, Cevix actually doesn't have an item to, to, to do a uh, calculation of the CPU time that the process takes. So I used a little uh, custom user parameter to, uh, to um, yeah, grab that information from, uh, uh, from PS. Um, the discovery returns uh, the name of the process and the user it's running under. So you can do a regular expression filtering on a set of processes basically just being used by that user. It'll, it'll generate an item um, that that will uh, list back the number of processes that are running. It is a high risk to run this in a production environment. Um, what you basically have if one of the machines is highly loaded, you get a whole load of uh, processes, and each process will automatically start monitoring your um, uh, yeah uh, a lot of new items. And the new items are are basically uh, uh, set to a low interval. So the, the the low interval will make sure that your agent either dies or your server dies um, if you do not use the regular expressions to filter them. So if you have, want to have a look at this, please be my guest, but don't use it on a production system unless you know what you're doing. Um, and here's some screenshots from the um, uh, from the actual items that are generated. So if you look here. You can see the, uh, the CPU usage for all of the processes that are owned by the user Zabbix. Uh, in this case, 16% uh, for the, uh, the agent. Um, yeah, the, the memory usage for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the processes and also, yeah, the, the number of processes. I was busy with this and at some point I had a sudden realization. I can use actually any type of item. You can use Zabbix Sender to actually tell Zabbix what items it needs to monitor on a host. This, this allows for a very dynamic set of items. This could be ideal for things like syslog or SNMP traps or whatever. Um, there's only one problem. See the Sebix bug, uh, the LOD triggers are deleted automatically if there is no discovery for this uh, item anymore. Um, this kind of breaks my idea, but um, it's still good for graphing because the items are still there, so you can still push uh, push data into it. So, for the ones that are not familiar with NetFlow, I decided to use uh, NetFlow and try to push that into Zabbix via this construct. Um, NetFlow, yeah, basically what it does, it, it uses a um, you can configure it on your Cisco routers or whatever, and it will start pushing UDP packets, which with with um, um, uh, um, 
yeah, with, with statistics for certain uh, conversations between two hosts over the network. You can't do this simply. This, this is really bad because the, the stuff is uh, completely dynamic. So you have a, uh, a host A that talks to host B over port C and, and yeah, just to build items for this in Zabbix is, is not doable. Uh, LLD can help in this. So um, I set out to do this. Uh, uh, looking through the available tools that I had to actually start gathering uh, the low level, sorry, the, uh, the NetFlow stuff, I found uh, a project called NFDump on SourceForge. And it provides a daemon that starts logging your, your NetFlow data. And then it has a, another tool that's called NFDump that can actually parse and, and change and uh, filter the, the data that's in the, um, uh, that's in, in, the, in the log files that you generate with the, uh, with the capture daemon. So, and then if you script NFDump and you push that into Zabbix Sender, then you can actually push the NetFlow data into Zabbix. NetFlow discovery. Um, as you can see, it's an item type of the type of Zabbix Trapper. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep the data for like uh, 30 days. This is one of the item prototypes and what it does, it just takes uh, 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 the, the, da the data uh, from, the, um, uh, from, from, the, from the capture file and it pushes it out with uh, two uh, macros, one with the source and one with the destination. I didn't bother actually using the port numbers and whatever because yeah, it's just a proof of concept and I just wanted to know if this could work. Basically also this is a Zabbix Trapper item. So Zabbix Trapper, uh, the Zabbix sender actually pushes the data into Zabbix. Here you can see a um, screenshot with some of the items that were automatically generated by Zabbix because of uh, the Zabbix sender actually sending in the, the, the NetFlow data statistics. And what it does, yeah, like it just shows you the traffic between the two IP addresses. And then you can get graphs like this. So from host A to host B, there has been this much data. Unfortunately, my script is still a bit buggy, uh, so I haven't published it on GitHub yet. Um, when I've yeah, fixed uh, most of the bugs, and I'll put it on my GitHub as well, so you can download and look it for yourself. Um, conclusion, low-level discoveries make your SNMP life a lot easier, because if you can do the SNMP walk and automatically discover all your interfaces, you don't have to have a template with like 10,000 items in there. It'll just generate it for you on the fly. Problem I had with, uh, with uh, normal templates on agents is that you also have a lot of items for your, for your disks and whatever. Yeah, this, this just turns it into one item that you have to support and the rest is automatically generated for you again. Um, yeah, and it just opens up a whole world of new possibilities. If you're really creative, you can, yeah, you can basically uh, push almost anything into Zabbix and it'll start automatically monitoring for you. So that's it. So any questions? <laughs> Every network device supports uh, Net NetFlow. Did you try to use SFlow instead? No, I haven't actually. Um, what um, I, 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 did, I just used this as a proof of concept. I was just thinking, okay, where can I use okay. this Zabbix Sender thing for? And one of the first things that hit my mind was NetFlow because I've always been frustrated that Zabbix could not do NetFlow actually. Um, okay, I, I know it's not really the aim for Zabbix to do that, but yeah, I wanted to have this graphing for, for, uh, uh, yeah, for traffic statistics in Zabbix, one of the things that I needed to look into, but uh, I don't see why this shouldn't work for S-Flow. Um, yeah, you just need to take care uh, Functionally, that they are almost one-to-one. -one. All right. So, sorry? They have both protocols are simple. Uh, yeah, so provides it, almost it, the same not, functionality. It should not be a problem. Um, basically, you, you can do this for almost anything that's dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. the, the only thing that's actually a constraint is that you have to really be careful that it doesn't go haywire and create like 10,000 items or something like that just in a second and then uh, the load of your server just dies or whatever. So exactly. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Raymond. Yeah, you're welcome. It was a great speech indeed. <laughs>